Hi friends, I'm Prairie Vintage. My name's Linda. I'm an energy intuitive reader here on YouTube. I use spirits, my intuition, and the tarot to communicate energies to you guys. I'm so, so blessed that you could join me today. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you are returning, I'm so grateful. You guys are all so very welcome and safe in this space with me today. Today's reading, we'll be taking a look at your current situation, okay? The one that's most energetically um, charged around you and how you're looking at the situation and what the objective truth is in regards to that situation. So it could very well be that you know the objective truth, although you might not want to accept or see, or you may just have a, an intuition about what this is, but you're not sure and you want to confirm, all right? So if this is something completely foreign to you, um, it could just mean you're out of touch with your intuition for whatever reason. Um, so I do want to issue a trigger warning. If you resonate with the first part of the reading, which is how you're kind of perceiving your situation to be, chances are the second part is your message, all right? Although I do want you to use your intuition, what you will um, see, feel, or hear to confirm that this is your message. Because again, I'm just a pair of talking hands on the internet. But I did ask spirits to deliver the objective truth here to help you in whatever this um, situation is. I'm assuming it is a conflicting situation or, el or else it probably would not appear in the cards today, okay? So three options to choose from today. Option number one is the obsidian sword. Option number two is the clear quartz chunk. And option number three is the cut glass um, knife holder. I don't know, antique knife holder, I believe. All right, so take a look at these three. Your timestamps will be in the description box and in the pinned comment below. If you are called to more than one object, it can mean multiple aspects of your current situation coming through from different perspectives, aspects, timelines, and whatever, but only if you resonate, okay? And as those of you guys who have been here before, generally my piles tend to be um, connected because energy is very, very much interconnected, okay? So I will let the video run for a bit and I will see you guys at your pick. Hello, my beautiful pile one. You picked the obsidian sword. Absolutely beautiful. We're looking at the objective truth in your situation. So what it is that you're currently seeing or understand your situation to be, and then the objective truth, what is actually um, going on in your situation. Okay. So like I mentioned in the intro, there is a trigger warning here because sometimes we don't want to know the truth um, and sometimes we understand the truth, but we deny it or suppress it or just don't want to receive it. So if you're not prepared for an objective truth regarding your situation, this might not be your video. And then again, you know, I cannot tell you what is true or not. Um, only you can do that using your intuition. But if you resonate with this first part being... Um, your energy in regards to your situation, chances are the second part is the objective truth going on that you might not want to see or have seen yet. Okay, so I have not looked at these. I just shuffled them. So I, I do ask that you use your intuition, what you will see, feel, or hear to confirm that this message is for you. And then of course, resonating with this first part is going to make you understand what situation we are talking about. This is gonna be something that's heavily charged around you the most and and we'll get into it that way. Okay, so let's take a look what's going on. So we have 31 with in the hand, the universe is your partner. Okay, this is number four. Now this does not mean that this is wrong. This is just how you're perceiving a situation, okay? So parts of this could certainly be objective, but it is coming from your perspective, okay? Before we get into the objective truth of the matter. Two with anomaly. We have all these crows and then a white crow. And we have, it looks like um, 
when the dandelions go into seed. So a whole bunch of wishes here. When you blow on the dandelion seed and you make a wish, that's what it looks like to me. Okay, and we have isolation with a, looks like a tuxedo. And that says imitation. It looks like it says in, in imitation, inflation. I do not know what that says. All right. We have smoke, 32, or the number five. Okay, we have the snake, number seven, and then we have the queen of clubs, which is the queen of wands showing up here. The snake, queen of wands. Wands is Aries, Leo, Sagittarius energy. We have stag spirit, take the lead, 58. Or the number 13. Or the number four. 13 is the death card in the tarot all about transformation. Clearing the old to make way for the new. And number four is all about stability. Stag spirit, take the lead. I'm feeling heavy um, earth from this. And I'm also feeling heavy... Aries energy. So Earth is Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. And heavy Aries, divine masculine energy I'm feeling here. Come to the edge, 36, or the number 9. 9 is all about endings. 9 is the hermit in the tarot, which is all about introspection. Uh, that is Virgo energy coming through. Sixth house with sustainability, number 44, or the number 8. Sixth house, um, that is all about fitness and health, um, work habits and, and the service we give. Okay, sustainability, sixth house. Okay, we have connect. You're being asked to connect with others in meaningful ways. Sometimes it's helpful to get new perspectives and to simply be around other people. You're in need of this right now, and deep connection will benefit you in many ways. All right, we have throat chakra with the number five here. Throat chakra is all about communication and how we receive communication, but also how we deliver communication. Okay, we have the raccoon. This is earth energy, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. Raccoon. The hound. Loyalty, chains, and promises. We see this sort of truth, which would represent communication being shattered here by some shadow wolf, shadow hound. Loyalty, chains, and promises. Put that under the smoke. The broken heart with number nine coming out again. So we got two nines here, or at least reduced. Broken heart. Three of Swords energy from this. And we have Apocalypse with the number 74 or the number 11. 11 is an Ascended Master's number. Apocalypse. And we have Hawk. <clears throat> okay. I do have the tarot, although I won't. I don't think I'm going to pull it just yet. And we're going to see what your situation is here. And then we will um, pull my wand out. And then we will, um, yeah, let's just see what your situation, how you're perceiving this situation first. Just give me a little bit. Okay, it's a little bit, I think you're, you're confusing yourself a little bit here. You're not sure, you're not trusting yourself in a situation. 
So a situation here, I, I feel, has presented itself to you that I feel you you not sure if you're supposed to do something or if it's supposed to unfold naturally in some way. And so if you have to do something here, I, I feel like you're uncomfortable or not prepared or not sure what you're supposed to do because you don't feel you understand or see the full picture. Also, you don't know, you don't want to be kind of played a fool or if you're seeing something correctly. So you want to make sure that you're aligned in your highest good here, uh, aligned with the authentic truth. But at the same time, it's like, I feel like you're... Um, you're challenged here to take action because you're not quite sure what you're supposed to really do because you don't know if you could trust this situation. And I feel like this is a situation that you might have never really been in. So there's discomfort here. And at the same time, there is a fear here of maybe missing out on something that could be quite spectacular, like a wish come true in some way. And so I feel like you want to be in your best self. You want to do the best thing. I mean, who doesn't want to do the best thing? But I feel like there's a heavy pressure here in doing everything right and perfect and being some type of energy here that you feel you need to be in that will really, really push you outside of your comfort zone here. Um, but you also feel like if you're seeing the situation from a perspective that might not necessarily be accurate, then you don't want to go out of your way or invest or, or follow something here that might lead you to experience sadness, heartbreak, disappointment whatever it was that you might have experienced at some point in time um, has got you kind of restricted. The heaviness here is in the confusion because I think you're in a situation here that could go a whole bunch of different ways. Um, you feel like you're not really able to make sense of it or to hang on to a truth so that you can walk, talk, and understand a full truth because there's a lot of different aspects to the situation. And so I, I feel like if you follow one thing, you might feel as though you're maybe being lied to or you're not quite sure if you're seeing clearly or you're not quite sure if people involved have the best intentions and so you don't want to be played a fool. But at the same token here, there's... Um, an understanding that if this is something that is worth investing, then you don't want to miss out. But then at the same time, you're like, how much do you let the universe kind of unfold and how much action do you take in this situation? Are you going to be guided to do the right thing? Are you going to find stability here by just following the lead of spirits? Or do you have to really push yourself outside of your comfort zone in order to make something happen here? Like how far do you got to go to attain something is what I feel. I do feel this involves other people or another person, the situation. There's a heavy emphasis on how you would appear. because I, I feel there is a, a heaviness here um, sitting with um, how you're perceived maybe by others or maybe, I don't know, others involved in the situation or others around you not involved in the situation. But either which way, other people maybe that might influence you or are that you might care what they think or what you feel is important what they think. And maybe you don't want to draw a whole bunch of attention to yourself in some way or do something here. Um, I also feel like there's an understanding that you don't feel like you might have 
what you need or what it takes or the situation isn't presenting you with enough need for you to go and do something or to i don't know it's like I feel there's something missing or you feel as though there's something missing here for you to take hold of and, and go and and um, take action. So I feel like there is a sadness here that you're feeling, okay, with isolation and heartbroken because I feel like it's kind of a damned if you do and damned if you don't. And if you sit here, you don't want to miss out. So you want to take action, I feel. But at the same time, it's like, how do you take action on something you're uncertain of? And if you take action, you don't want to make things worse here in some way. You're not sure if you could trust, I feel here, um, this situation or this person or what's going on here. Because you feel you can't see it clearly or you're not seeing it. And, and you're also not sure how reliable or sustainable this is I want to read raccoon here just let me grab raccoon I think it's here okay raccoon <clears throat> all right so it says talented shadowy in hiding Raccoon energy is at play within all artists to greater or lesser degree. It's okay. At best, it indicates talent, tenacity, and skillfulness with a particular musical instrument or creative tool. Its shadow side points to an unresolved issue around self-image and success. Sometimes using a stage name or wearing a mask works in an artist's favor. favor. Other times it limits creativity. Am I who my audience thinks I am? What if I am ready to grow into something more? Raccoon energy won't let us off the hook until this creative ego fear is resolved. Okay. So the music thing could come up because that comes up in my reading. So it could certainly be a musician. Okay. Or have an, an affinity for music or play a musical instrument here. But... That's for some of you guys. What I'm really picking up here, I was getting in the perception. I, I feel like there is a, um, what is that called? It's like when you have, um, there's a name for this and I don't know why it's not coming to me. Just give me a second. not coming to me the name but it, it it is like you're wearing some sort of a mask here because you feel as though your past experience is really limiting you from allowing yourself to come out and I, I was feeling something about it having to be perfect or something like here um where it doesn't really necessarily have to be so now we're experiencing sadness and isolation because we're not partaking in something that we want So I don't feel like you're in your authentic being here. And I feel like why you're not maybe trusting a situation here, what you're not seeing is because you're not believing in your own self, your own intuition, your own ability. And this is stemming from an experience that you had that left you feeling disappointed. So I don't know how deep rooted this is, but it's limiting you. This experience limits you from experiencing the joy you want in this situation. So, imposter syndrome, that's the word. I'm feeling imposter syndrome here. I think you see yourself in one way. And maybe you want others to perceive you in whatever way that is. But there's a part of you here that isn't allowing yourself to experience something else. And so I think what you're doing in your situation is always trying to gain a different understanding or you're trying to see things differently in some way. But I, I feel like there's a lot of wheel spinning and not enough action <clears throat> is what I feel. Because I, I feel like this type of energy is one that says maybe tomorrow I'm not yet prepared. Keep preparing, preparing, and, and never the right time comes. 
because again, the fear comes, how will we be perceived uh, by others or maybe even by ourselves or that we might fear experiencing the same thing we did <clears throat> that we are identifying with as being part of ourselves that might have been something we experienced, but is not who we are. So I feel like there's a lot of um, mess you're sorting through, and I feel like you want to see, you cut through all of this. You want to see clearly. You want to do something here in your greatest truth. Speak your truth. Walk your truth. Talk your truth. And it's like you're you're either waiting for this to happen or you're not quite sure how to make something happen here. So it feels a little bit all out of control here. But you want to just attain something. You want to connect to what this is in a very clear way. But there's so much distortion here based on a, a past experience and a, um, what you're telling yourself or what you understand or identify as with this imposter syndrome you're not being authentic here to what you're feeling inside of what you're wanting to go after what you're wanting to commit to so you know what uh, this is still kind of vague to me and maybe you're like yeah yeah this is what it is but to me i don't know what that is so i i just want some tarot just to see if we could get a little bit more what this is and then i'm going to get into well, the objective truth here okay so spirits can we just get a little bit more for pile one like what is this about their current situation what is their current situation about clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of pile one please protect me and the viewer as i channel this message and thank you so much pile one for allowing me to tap into your energy the energy around you at this time i'm truly blessed thank you so so much all right so yeah, the Ace of Swords, sorry, the Ace of Swords pointing down, which is we're not being honest about something, okay? Like I said, the truth, the sort of truth was being shattered here. So it was like, what are we not seeing? Smoke, the snake is all about being deceived, and it could be we're deceiving ourselves, we're not seeing clearly, okay, or we're not speaking a truth. This is the need to walk, talk, see a truth. And generally it's with ourselves. And here, yes, yeah, seven of swords in the reverse. It's it this in the upright is being deceived. Okay. Not being honest. This is the thief in the night that steals the swords. And in the upright, it's coming out. It's like the thief comes back to return the swords. Being honest with ourselves. Okay. Because this is self um sabotage and this is where we're being honest and clear about something so if this isn't your energy it's definitely someone around you okay like i said because this is the strongest energy around you that we're getting clarity about so someone is an honest clear and confusion here dealing with the way they'll be perceived so i feel like needing to come out uh to themselves to be honest with themselves here is what keeps coming up here and then we have the Hierophant. So Hierophant is Taurus energy. This is lifestyle. This is what we value. This is our traditions, our upbringing, higher level of learnings, commitments. So there's an understanding here of, I think, what you're identifying as. Who you, you say that you are what you've been conditioned to believe that you are because I feel there's been an experience and the experience could be a, an upbringing that's conditioned you to believe something untrue about yourself that you're identifying as not being good enough or maybe again imposter syndrome that you are not good enough or capable enough or that you're not it whatever the it is here I see a dove which is all about finding peace and we see a snake which is all about healing and wisdom and having to shed parts of ourself in order for the new growth to take place two keys crossed so that's kind of what i feel this energy was at the beginning because i feel like one part of you understand something and another part of you understand something so there's inaction or not seeing clearly because it's like you feel both sides kind of heavily so it feels like, what is the truth then? Because one side of you is saying, I'm not seeing clearly. I don't want to be 
taken advantage of or perceived in a certain way or I'm not understanding something, then the other side of you wants to attain um, something here that you feel is a wish is kind of like too good to be true. I feel you feel you'd find peace here. And it's like, which way is right? What's right for you? You're not sure here. So I'm getting a very innocent energy here from this from you. Let's pull three more spirit. What is this about? clarifying for pile one what more do they need to know here in regards to how they're perceiving this any questions they might have it's gonna help them identify okay so we have the fool this is all about taking a chance taking a risk and and the fool doesn't know where he's walking into okay but he moves forward in order to have a new beginning and sometimes the fool falls and so I feel like you're not sure. Do you risk it? Are you walking into a trap here because of what you've experienced in the past is keeping you not moving? Yes, four of pentacles. This is stuck energy. Hanging on to our comfort zone, seeing what we might lose out on rather than what we could gain. So this is a lack of mindset because we feel like we might lose out something that we have to risk in order to gain something so we stay idle and in our comfort zone and stuck and unmoving this is also stuck energy so i i i feel like you're really really stuck here and you're not sure if you should jump take the risk move come out in the open about something be honest about something be authentic and live in your truth if you're capable enough of doing this if this is some sort of truth Temperance, all about finding balance. This is patience. This is healing energy. Sagittarius energy. This is how do we take our situation and everything we know in order to have an outcome here so that we can work with our situation so that we can have a, a positive outcome or we can make something out of this situation. It takes a lot of um, patience, alchemy. And it requires us being in a certain energy that can work with external energies in order to make something, to find the balance, cohesion between two things. This is the energy, the effort, and the dedication towards something that will result fruitful for us. And we see a ghost kind of flying out here. Um, I feel like, yeah, it's like the past is haunting you. And so therefore, it's like impacting how much effort you're putting into something, but also your perception of how long maybe something is taking here to come from something, but yet you're focused or looking at one aspect of this thing. because of something you've experienced in the past so maybe something that seems like it's taking long or it's not working or whatever you're doing you're like see it doesn't work but it's like well you're folk i feel you're focused on something that isn't isn't sort of the reality of the situation here kind of almost like self-fulfilling prophecy is kind of what i'm getting here because we were in self-sabotage, it's like we told ourselves something based on an experience, and then it's like we're, we're waiting for that thing to show itself. And so we're hesitant, and we're not, we're not confident enough in ourselves here, okay? This is, again, the imposter syndrome thing, rather than just putting forward the full energy. Okay, this is kind of same, giving me same energy, the fool, and this come to the edge. It's like pushing yourselves outside of our comfort zone. Despite what's, you know, what maybe we're telling ourselves here or what we're trying to see rather than do. That's why we have this take the lead because I feel like you're supposed to be doing something. And we have five of wands. Conflict. This is all the, also other people. Okay, this is could be conflict within ourselves. Like we're really conflicted, but maybe there's competition here or we feel like other people might be competition for us or just we feel a challenge here in accomplishing something but i feel like there's a lot of concern with how other people might get involved or how things might pan out here and here's the death card okay so it was in reverse here 
because I, I feel like what spirit is showing is that in order for you to make way for the new, there has to be a clearing of, of the, of the playing ground here. Okay. We have to clear out all the old stuff that doesn't allow there to be the new. And I feel like the old is still hanging around. And so we can't show up in an energy here that can make something happen because we're still preoccupied with things of the past people of the past things that we are identifying as parts of ourselves that need to be shed, need to be over with here in order for us to receive the gifts of the universe here. But not only do we receive, we have to take action in this new energy, take risks, let go of certain experiences and things that hold us back. That might have been something from the past. So um, I do feel there's a need to take action here, but let's look at your... What is the objective truth? And then we'll we'll pull tarot if we still have question marks around that, okay? So I didn't really get what the situation was so much, but because it, the tarot kind of repeated this thing, but I, I feel like if you're here still, then you know what this is about. I'm going to have a sip of my tea, and then we're going to reveal the oracle. All righty. Thank you so much, spirits. Uh, what is the objective truth then for pile one? 22, motion and air, or the number four. Again, about stability. We see five horses here, white horses. White's about purity, but horses are all about um, freedom, but also power. Horsepower, okay? We measure engines by horsepower, so it's is very powerful here. We have five horses. It's kind of giving me five of wands energy as well. And almost like an untamed power here. Um, almost like it's lacking direction because we have air in motion. So air energy definitely coming out. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy. We have discipline with time. 41 or the number five. Five again. Five of wands was coming out. So all these clocks and keys. More keys we're seeing. Saw keys in the higher fence. Here's more keys up here. There's like one, two, three. Oh my gosh. Four, five, six, seven. There's lots. There's at least 11 keys here that I'm seeing. Um, keys are all about answers, solutions, and opening doors to new phases of life here. And so with the snake, it's like what needs to go in order for the new to come in? I feel as though you've had plenty of opportunity to open a door that you have not yet opened many many times and i feel like it's taking quite some time here with all these clocks so i don't know like are we missing out on something because we're too afraid to step stand forward and speak a truth look she's holding this microphone like she's about to sing something and she's dressed like a flapper which is 1930s uh, energy here great gatsby energy coming through because I feel like, again, that's like uh, something of the past, like the history here. And, and I feel like something of the past needs to be spoken to self, acknowledged to self, maybe out loud to another or recognized or embraced instead of shoved down in order for there to be a, a spoken truth and in order for you to accomplish something that you're wanting in the new and the right here right now. Because I feel like there's an energy trapped in the past and I feel until this passing energy gets talked about and embraced by yourself, or again, if it needs to be discussed with another, depending on who's all involved here, I feel like we're going to be stuck in that energy. But I feel like you're getting on the stage of life, whatever the situation, needing to fulfill some sort of role or do something that you want to do, or at least that you're being called to do, or that you see as an opportunity to do. I feel time and time again, and I feel like time has passed and we're still stuck talking about the past, but not even talking about it, maybe just trapped because I don't feel she's talking. I don't even feel she's acknowledging. So when she shows up, it's like she hasn't even dealt with the past. Never mind how she's going to deal with the future. So these horses, they have no direction because I feel the horses want freedom. They want to run wild here. They want to, we want to be empowered. We want to have a sense of direction, but instead I feel we feel stuck or trapped, but behind that, there's so much power. There's so much that wants to come out of this. I feel like there's so much raw energy that wants to just go, but 
sometimes just going in a whole bunch of direction doesn't really help us until we know where we're guided to go. Um, I feel there's something here, and I know I haven't even touched this, so my goodness. But I, I feel like there's something here, again, because we're seeing a lot of fours, which is talking about stability. We see the tree, which is all about stability. Something taking roots. Okay, something that is solid. Something that has longevity here that can stand the test of time. Something you could dedicate yourself to. And I feel like you're in an energy of having to deal with something in the past in order for us to have an aimed direction where we want to put our intention. Because I feel you have pure intentions. And I feel you want to have movement here with motion. Okay, and now we this saying discipline here. So maybe there's more you're able to do here than you feel you can or have done to this point. Okay, objectively. So we have the granting of blessings from and good fortune with Jupiter. And then in the shadow, we have learn or teach, be positive about, grow and expand. So Jupiter is the ruling planet for Sagittarius and Pisces. We saw Sagittarius with the temperance. Um, <clears throat> Jupiter is the planet of luck, abundance, good fortune, okay, blessings, just like it says. I feel like there is expansion here, okay? I do feel there is expansion. You're being called to expand. We saw that with the, with the fool. We saw that with the come to the edge. This is all about expansion. This is pushing ourselves outside of our comfort zone in order for us to expand as an individual through experience. So I feel like this is pushing you and it's pushing you because I think you're needing to deal with something here that you haven't talked about or acknowledged an experience that I feel has been disappointing there. We have joy, beautiful card. This is um, solar plexus chakra energy with the yellow joy and these are looking like dandelions to me dandelion leaves anyway and we were seeing the dandelions uh dandelion wishes <clears throat> in the oracle card here dandelions could be significant for you maybe you like dandelions but i i feel like it's representing your wishes coming true and because this is an anomaly with the white crow, this is like so out of the blue. Like this is something maybe that is so out of the blue, so rare, so unique here. Whatever this this wish or this hope or this desire is, because Jupiter here, this is something very auspicious, something like somewhat of a blessing or a miracle, I feel here. Okay, like it's a wish. So keep finding my hair here we see the dandelion here before seeding and we see joy uh the oil of vitriol with 35 or the number eight oil of vitriol okay let's keep going we have the cosmic womb with the number six the divine feminine Six is the card of the lovers, which is about choosing our destined path or destined partner, what we're supposed to be kind of choosing here. Um, the sixth house coming through again, uh, which I was talking about, that's all about health and fitness and service, which was coming through. I, I feel like there's a service here that you're supposed to be doing. And trees all about health the health of something here i think in order for something to flourish to stabilize the health of something there needs to be yeah the birth of something there needs to be an energy of doing something now divine feminine is receptive energy and then we were seeing take the lead which was coming from your perception of something which is more divine masculine energy take the lead but I wasn't feeling like you were taking the lead. I, I was feeling like you were not sure if you should take a lead of some sorts here. But Divine Feminine is receptive energy. So let's see. Let's keep going. And the Oil of Vitriol is <clears throat> not a very positive card here. Okay. But, I mean, at least it, it's communicating something. But it's out of anger. Or it's reacting out of anger. The Garden uh number 20 and then we have the eight of swords eight of swords is limiting ourselves by a belief again with the hierophant we believe something and it limits us 
something untrue. It's like a mental prison that keeps us stuck in the past, unable to expand, to move forward because our beliefs are on something that's not true. Okay, so, but the garden is all about um, networking. So I, I feel like what is untrue here is something about how you think others are perceiving you or how you'd be perceived here by other people with the garden. Coming through again. Let's see. We have Lizard Spirit to dream the world into being with 38. Number 11. Imagine number 20. 20 coming out again because we had 20 here with the garden. And then we have the Crescent Moon with Imagine. This is giving me the dandelion seeds again. Imagine dreams, hoping, wishing imagination okay we have the threshold with 45 or the number nine the threshold we have lighten up you're being asked to remember that life doesn't always have to be so serious yes there are hard things happening no it's not always easy to be here on earth but you can always find time to laugh be silly and have fun it's so important that you do so all right I don't like when people tell me to lighten up. We'll see what this is all about. 21 with the universe. This is the world card in the traditional tarot. This is the psychic tarot. So the universe, the world, the world's all about concluding something. This divine feminine is also about birthing something where we're incubating something for quite some time so we can birth something new, have a new beginning, but we need to conclude a cycle. And, and because the universe, I mean, there's a whole, all sorts of stars in the universe. Stars are all about our wishes and our dreams again. Wishes, dreams, our hopes for the future, our desires. Star energy is Aquarius energy. We have the golden egg. I'm getting that uh, apocalypsis energy from this. The, the environment here. Not this one, it's the other one. The environment here feels a little chaotic around you. And look, the little yellow, I don't know what they are, little, well, they're not eggs, flames, I don't know, but it's the yellow that stands out amongst the chaos here. This is also an egg about rebirth, rebirthing ourselves, kind of going through a spiritual rebirth. And that's the snake, shedding what's old, what no longer serves us things we've experienced that we need to not identify with so we could be born anew. And we have the pilgrim, opportunities and growth. That's expansion. We see the hermit's lantern again. Hermit, like we were saying, is all about introspection. Being so understanding of our authentic self that we no longer waver because we know who we are and what we want. So we can speak a truth, so we can expand and grow. But it is someone that is quite removed. Okay. Um, this is Virgo energy as well. And door to spirit, 32. More dubs. Peace. This is transitioning. This is also transitioning. This is also transitioning. Okay. This is about to transition when the threshold. We're about to cross over. Dream the world into being. It's also wishes, dreaming the world into being. Okay. I do feel like I want to pull some tarot here um, in a bit. What's going on here? I, I'm not quite sure how this oil of vitriol st uh, stacks up, but I, what I, is really sticking out amongst all this stuff here because I feel like it is coming from your energy. And this is self-sabotage energy of somebody who is doing the opposite of what they want to attain. And this isn't a very pleasant energy here, okay? This is somebody who is um, defensive and somebody who is causing the opposite outcome. But everything here 
around you, I, my goodness, like is all talking about wishes coming true, great abundance, transitioning from the old into the new to have expansion. But I, I feel like there's a, an understanding here of I don't know, like, of one thing, excuse me, I just need some tea. My throat chakra is tightening up here. I feel like there's one thing that you understand about yourself or your situation that is a misconception that keeps you stuck. That doesn't allow other people in or doesn't allow you to enjoy other people or situations. And so you sit kind of as an outsider here, but but I feel like what your what the objective truth here is is probably how much of a role you're playing in maybe how this could unfold and has not yet unfolded. I feel like your actions contradict what you want to happen here and I don't sense there's a whole lot of movement but I sense what you're saying is action enough because what you're saying to yourself or what you're saying to others or what you're saying about this situation is telling the universe I am not ready I'm not prepared I do not want it because I'm not deserving or I'm not ready or I don't want it. So I feel you're pushing away joy. I feel you're pushing away something here that you're more than prepared to experience. And, and I feel like what you're maybe not being honest about here is be, where this is stemming from. Because I feel this is stemming from an experience of the past that keeps you very stuck. And also, there is a lot of weight on how you're perceived by others or how you might be perceived because there's a lot riding on image. And so maybe you're in denial about caring what other people think or that image matters. But here it's seeing the opposite, that you are have a persona to keep up. You're wearing a mask. You're doing the opposite here by wearing a mask and not being authentic to yourself. And you're not speaking, walking, talking in a truth that you understand. So therefore the opportunity doesn't take hold. Because I feel like Wherever there was all this smoke, uncertainty, not clear, don't want to be taken a fool, is someone lying to me? It's coming from you. All this uh, chaotic energy. So you're, you're turning it into seeing the situation that way. Like the situation is unclear. People are unclear. People could be lying, blah, blah, blah. But no, I feel you see it clear that that situation is crystal clear. But we throw that in there rather than looking at self, going inwards and saying, am I limited by my own thoughts here? Which is why I have not allowed things to progress or for me to embrace, for me to take root of something here, for something to stabilize. So I keep myself out. I shut others out. And I point at all the other things that I pretend are the reasons why there's chaos and apocalypsis energy. Meanwhile, I take comfort in all that going on because then I don't need to decide. Then I don't need to break out of my comfort zone. Then I don't need to embrace something here that makes me feel uncomfortable. But the door is open. And what, you, what you're not seeing here is that you actually find peace there. That you're more in discomfort where you're sitting. That you're more in chaos. That once you 
cross over to whatever this is and allow yourself to be rebirthed and conclude the past by embracing and acknowledging something's hurt you or that you've experienced something, you're no longer in limbo. But I feel there's been delays and excuses and multiple attempts to open this door by the universe, granting you something very expansive and it's heavily charged here by your own accord. But we're communicating the opposite and, and, and hoping to uh, do some um, self-fulfilling prophecy to repeat the past and say, see, I couldn't have trusted this thing, this person, this situation. See, it was too good to be true. See, it was something I couldn't trust. See, it was something I couldn't have any control over see it was just something like the past see it is something that i'm not able to and i'm glad i didn't go outside of my comfort zone meanwhile here we're feeling isolated here we're feeling not in our authentic self here we're feeling left out i don't know how many tries the universe is going to give you but i can tell you that uh, transformation happens whether we like it or not once once we're in the spot where it has to take place it becomes very very uncomfortable because i feel the universe gives us signs and helps us to shift on our own accord and if we can't on our own accord the universe does it for us in a very painful way and painful way might mean missing out on opportunities that have presented itself So I feel like spirit's showing is that on the other side of that door, on the other side of that birth, what you have been invested in here, because I feel like you are invested in something here, what you've been wishing for, I feel like it went from like uh, its infant stage here of a wish, a desire, something very joyful. And I, I feel like it's maturing here into, because I feel the dandelions now turned into seeds making the wish, but I feel like a winter is coming soon here. And even this tree is now uprooted. And we were seeing the seven of pentacles, which is the harvest. I feel like now is the time to harvest because I don't know that this opportunity is going to be presenting itself. And then it's going to fulfill your prophecy. Your prophecy of saying that, see, it wasn't going to happen or see, it wasn't going to be something I could bring into being because it was just a dream. It was too good to be true. It was something here that wasn't supposed to happen. Meanwhile, the universe was ready to gift it to you. But there was a whole lot of stability here in this happiness. But you had to let it take root. But you're getting in the way of it. There's so much energy coming from this card here. You're getting in the way of it taking root due to something that you're not yet able to to admit or acknowledge that's happened in the past. So this might have come out harsh, okay? And I don't ever mean for these to come out harsh um, because healing hurts sometimes when we hear truths, which is why I put this... Um, you know, this disclaimer, a caveat at the beginning of the reading that sometimes, you know, these readings are hurtful if we're not prepared to hear truth. But let's see then, what are you supposed to do? Because I feel like you already know what you're supposed to do. You're just in an eight of swords telling yourself you cannot. But let's just ask, Spirit, what are you supposed to do? One, I think you need to acknowledge that you're in the eight of swords, that there is something you're able to do, that this is a blessing you can receive that you're not the, whatever you're telling yourself that is not supposed to happen or can't happen or too good to be true is just your own defenses here to keep some story alive allow this to take roots but you need to help plant this thing so let's see what do you need to do what does pile one need to to do right here right now spirits thank you so so much for this guidance for pile one they need to know what it is that they need to do what they need to know about their existing situation. Thank you so much, Spirit. You're so blessed. Thank you so, so much. 
Okay, so we have Five of Pentacles in the reverse, King of Pentacles in the reverse, Earth Energy, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn Energy. We have Justice, Libra. We have the Seven of Wands in the reverse. Why is this King of Pentacles here? And we have the Fool jumping out in the reverse this time. And then finally, why is this Justice here? Two of Swords in the reverse. Bottom of the deck. Empress. This is this energy. Divine, feminine, cosmic, womb, birthing, abundance, fertility. We have two children here and a swan. And this gate is open. Okay, so uh, definitely I feel like something in regards to the past here. And I don't know how far back it goes. It could be childhood because childhood's coming through here, okay? It could be mother. Wounds could be just something with parental upbringing, um, but I, I feel like there's an inner child here that needs to be acknowledged, and I, I do feel as though there's something that is being birthed here for you, okay, or that could be birthed here, okay, this is birthing, 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 all this abundance to be birthed, look at this baby, so I don't know, it could even be like literally birthing a baby here, okay, for some of you guys, and this keeps coming through, it's something of a, a great blessing here, so I ask, what do you need to do? Well, Five of Pentacles, this is down and out, feeling left out. This is the isolation card that we were seeing here with that tuxedo. You're feeling isolated. Okay, you feel isolated. There's no doubt you feel left out in the cold, but this is, Five of Pentacles is we can do something about this. We can either dwell on what isn't working or we can go do something about it, right? With the with the five of pentacles, it's the beggars outside the church when the church door is open and they can go inside and seek refuge, but they sit out there in the cold. So this is coming out of the five of pentacles will require action, okay? And, and the seven of wands is the card of resilience, is standing your ground, speaking your truth, fighting your battle, having the higher ground here to overcome adversity. And it is in the reverse because I feel like you feel like you're not capable of facing something here, which I, I feel is not true. Again, like we said, because you believe this eight of swords. So it's keeping you from taking a risk, keeping you from expanding, keeping you from jumping forward because you don't know where you're headed to. So you could tell yourself it's disastrous. It's chaos. It's going to repeat. It's this, that, and the other, but we don't know. And, and when we live life safe, we don't grow, we don't expand, we're not happy, we feel removed, we feel out in the cold. So even if we walk into a bomb here, I mean, we've lived life. And I don't feel you're walking into a bomb, but I feel like the bomb is sitting where you are. Because this is stuck, stuck, stuck energy, stuck, stuck. King of Pentacles, this is father energy, okay? This is being able to commit, this is being able to root something. This is, again, stability very secure energy here and it is in reverse because I feel like something isn't stabilizing here because something else is stuck so it doesn't allow for there to be birth so the justice card about bringing balance okay allowing whatever it is to be birthed but I feel like you're turning your back on something here you're turning your back on bringing justice here on something and you're rather focused on something else saying like that's the issue or the problem or the thing and maybe you already know all this, but I feel like you're, again, doing the opposite here. Instead of facing forward, dealing with the birth of this baby or this thing or this enterprise or whatever this thing is, bringing it into fruition, we have our back turned to it and we're being fixed in our position with the stone here and we're uh, counterproductive with what we're saying. A defensive guard against. Okay, so this is showing me indecision with the Two of Swords. This is where... Two things could be happening here, and we're not deciding either which way, so we sit idle. But it, it sometimes it can mean two opposing things. This and that cannot happen at the same time, so we have to choose. So instead of choosing, we sit there. But in the reverse, it's like uh, the universe makes the decision for us, and sometimes we don't like it. Because when we sit in indecision, that is a decision in itself. So I don't see that the swords are crossed. They see that they're like this. So I feel as though it's a pathway, either this or that. And I feel like you're seeing them as both being true, but 
the big message here that's going to conclude this reading, which I think is the thrust of all this, is you're blindfolded and both paths are not true. Now, again, the truth can be in our perception and we believe it to be true. And so therefore it is true. However, the objective truth is that one path is the truth and one path is the same old non-true path of what you're experiencing here, but hanging on to as living your truth, which is not true. It's keeping you restricted, blindfolded, and keeping you limited because you're believing yourself to have a limitation. But the other path is freedom. The other path empowers you. The other path gives you peace, power, okay, and freedom. Only one path does that. The other one is stuckness, not moving, limited, obstacle, but you're blindfolded. So you feel like you have control. You feel like there's two equal paths and you're sitting at the precipice of this big decision and you're not sure. That's the illusion is that you're not. You're telling yourself one thing is better because I feel you want to sit in an energy that's more comfortable. But the truth of the matter is that choosing the path that's freedom, choosing the path that's more aligned with an authentic truth means acknowledging what's happened here. And also this comes with being our authentic self and not really caring so much about what what our perception what the perception of other people would be or or what's happened in the past here because that would stem from fear keeping us stuck so why are we unhappy and left out in the cold because we're choosing to be stuck in a path that we think is some sort of truth which it's not okay so there's a need to take a, a, a risk here so i'm just going to pull some final words because I did say this was it, but I, I feel like I don't want to leave it with me kind of getting all uppity in your face. Let's just pull three cards here. What does spirit want to say to you then? What does spirit wants to communicate to pile one? Three cards spirit for pile one. What is the final message? What is the guidance? Anything they need to know that's still unclear, that's going to help them move forward. We have King of Cups. King of Cups is an emotionally mature king. This is water energy, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Creative energy. Okay, I'm getting a very strong message here. And like I said, sometimes these are triggering. I feel like you're sitting, understanding how you feel about something, but you're very fixed in this stone chair. This tidal wave is about to come. And this tidal wave is huge. And this tidal wave is overwhelming and you're sitting very fixed. So you're going to be unable to move when the wave comes and the wave is coming. And this wave of whatever this is could be a very strong sense of emotions where it's uh, you cannot handle it no more. Or where you're put in a situation here where I think you're going to be un, it's going to be unavoidable, but I feel like it's not comfortable at all because I feel like it really limits you and limits how you can move. And you're going to drown in this experience because I think you're recreating something here that you were telling yourself. I don't know, like telling yourself it was going to be this way anyway or recreate something here. And I think you're doing the self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, you're going to recreate it all, right? Because of reasons why opposite of what you thought, that it was going to happen like that on its own. No, it's going to happen this way because of the reasons why you've done this. And look behind him. An axe, an abacus, a hammer a knife and then there's this this net here keeping him kind of stuck all the tools are there you have the ability you have imposter syndrome you think you cannot but you can because everything is there and you're turning your back to it and you're watching yourself about to get drowned by something here is what spirit's showing you and telling you and there again seven of pentacles focusing on something that we're putting our, our time or energy into but i feel like the past is haunting you and you're focused and looking at the wrong thing here and i think you're putting energy and effort into the wrong thing here if i gotta be honest 
Nine of Cups, and it is in reverse. Nine of Cups is about emotional fulfillment and her child coming out again. But in the reverse, it's the glutton card. It's the immediate gratification over the long-term fulfillment here. Because we were seeing something here about, yeah, discipline. This is the opposite to discipline. This could be the hedonist card. Okay, so I, I feel like you're self-sabotaging, whatever this is. And you might already know it's kind of, but not understand why. And the objective truth here is telling you all the reasons what I said. That is the objective truth here that's going on, okay? And maybe you already know this, like I said, but... I feel there is peace. I mean, I'm getting a lot of peace in the door being open. In the garden, you find peace. Okay. But the garden is one where we allow people in. This is a network of people. This is allowing ourselves to kind of be exposed and out there. And, and I feel like you're not in that energy. So therefore, we make every excuse in the book to not be. But that wave's coming and spirit is showing and it's right there. And this isn't pleasant, whatever he's about to experience. But he's too distracted in, in trying to make something happen here. To prove a point of being right about something here because of a past. Rather than being focused on the birthing of something that he wants. Okay, so I hope this resonated for you this sounds very tricky here okay and i don't ever mean to deliver these in a harsh way it's how it comes out i do love you very much if you're resonating um with this it could very well be another pile might make sense to you um if not and you're checking out then i will see you at the next one bye hello my beautiful pile number two you picked the clear quartz chunk beautiful let's take a look at what we're doing here so we're pulling um well I, I ask spirit and i shuffle these cards i've not looked at them but what we're asking is what's going on in your current situation here how you're seeing it how you're perceiving it to be true and then what is the objective truth so there's one understanding you have and then there's the objective truth so if you resonate with this first part here which is how you're seeing the situation and if this resonates then chances are this objective truth is the message for you now i do ask you use your intuition what you will see feel or hear to confirm that this message is for you because there's no way for me to tell okay um and this could be something you already intuitively maybe know but maybe needed confirmation or it could be something you're in denial about or something you're not seeing at all because maybe you're cut off from your intuition but either which way I think the first part's going to help you to see if this is your message. All right. So again, I'm just a pair of talking hands here. So, you know, do not take what I'm saying here uh, to heart. If you're not prepared to hear objective truths, then this might not be your reading. Okay. Because sometimes objective truths aren't uh, very nice. So I'm not trying to be mean in any way. I'm just trying to deliver what this truth is. So if it's something you don't want to hear, then maybe not your reading, okay? So let's look at the perception that you have. And this is going to be your situation that is the most energetically charged here, okay? So your current situation. So we have 39 with the Moth Spirit, Surrender Now, or the number 12. We have time for a nap, 24, or the number six. And we have the, the crescent moon and the fox and a bunch of stars. Stars always give me Aquarius energy. Okay. Um, we have the 12th house with introspection or the number 50. Uh, 12th house is all about endings, healing, closure, spirituality, limiting beliefs, and our subconscious. Interesting. I was going to tell you uh, right before I made my tea, I pulled the crystals and from afar i was looking at this crystal and i was like oh i think pile two might have a misconception um and be clouded here and, and see something that they think they see very clearly um but i think they believe something to be true that isn't which i mean is obviously the nature of this reading but this one came through quite strong so maybe you really 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 believe something here okay um that was coming through but we'll, we'll see 
So 36 with play or the number nine. Nine is also about endings. We have three crows. Crows are about communication. They deliver messages in between worlds. Play. We have acceptance. Cherry pie. We have the despicable face. This is number 48. Or the number 12. Okay. 12 coming out twice here. And guess what 12 is? 12 is the 12th house, which we were talking about endings, subconscious, limiting beliefs, what's hidden. Okay. It's also about karma. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's see. We have fool's embrace with transmuting pain, 22. We have have faith. It's not always easy to have faith and trust that everything is going to be okay. Yet still, you must do exactly that. Because when you have faith, your life will begin to flow in magical ways that you will never, that you never imagined were possible. Wow. Transmuting pain. Okay. We have the child. Number 13. 13 is the death card and the tarot all about endings are coming out again for a, a fifth time. Okay, the child, innocence, and the child could be inner child as well. We have the jack of spades. So this is either the knight or the page of swords coming out. A bunch of butterflies here all about transformation. That's also death card energy. We have conflict and defeat with the number five. We have the nightingale. This is air energy. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. The muse, generosity and naivety. Three of cups. Okay. We have attachments. Number five coming out again. Two fives. That's all about change. All about conflict. And we have 52 with the tear, or the number seven, the tear. And we have the spider. Okay, I won't pull tarot just yet, uh, but I will read what your understanding of this thing is. Just give me a second. I feel a lot of pain in this pile. Pile number two. You've endured something here. That is very painful. And I feel like you're in an energy here of you just had enough now. And, and spirit's been by your side here and in, in trying to get you through this experience I, I do feel a very emotional right now so just give me a second sometimes it happens in my reading um where i get very emotional here and, and this is how i'm feeling um I feel like you are, you've had to shed so many parts of yourself here, okay, in this experience of what this is. I think it touches so many different parts of who you are. And I think this experience has been one that's changed you forever. 
this feels to me like somebody who's gone through a huge uh, spiritual shift here, a uh, dark night of the soul or, you know, a Kundalini awakening, something that has made them see the truth of who they are, where they were attached to people, places or things that were limiting them from connecting to themselves. So I feel like you see this. Your understanding that things that you've identified with or you're in the process of identifying the things you identify with are not who you are. That there is no person, place, or thing here that determines your value. That your experience does not dictate where you're going right now in the present moment and who you are and your self-worth. But I feel you felt chained by or stuck to a version of yourself here for quite some time. And it was through the experience of this that you were having to go through in order for you to transmute this energy into understanding a greater purpose here so that you can enter into a more joyous energy here of experiencing life from a completely different perspective. So your true voice comes out. But not only that, there's something you're supposed to be creating here. And without this experience, there's no way that you'd be able to create what this is. And so I feel like this energy, because this is your perception, I feel like you guys are very, very intuitive. So some of you guys might know this. But then it remains, why so much pain and experience here? that I have gone, I had to go through and what could I possibly be creating? What could be possibly worth all this pain? Because right now I, I feel there's an energy that you can't see what could possibly be worth the experience that you had here because it is very painful, challenging, depressing, dark, and so when you think of something you could create, when you think of the joy, when you think of the light, when you think of coming together, it's all very shallow. It's empty. It doesn't bring you joy. And so part of you thinks, would you have been better off staying in your ignorant self? And so I, I feel all you see is your suffering. And I feel all you see here is how tired you are. And I feel all you see here is how you feel tricked by an experience. And sometimes we curse spirits, God, and saying, why do we need to experience such pain? Why do we need to go through such an experience here? Was there not something that I was able to create here without having to suffer? And so what's coming through is spirit showing that you're amidst this, so therefore you're not seeing what's to come. You cannot see it yet because it hasn't happened yet. And so I feel you're having faith, but you're losing faith very quickly because it's, it's very painful here. So you just want to turn it all off. And you're not quite sure who you're supposed to be in this world, what your authentic self is supposed to do in this world, because all you can see is who you no longer are and what you no longer attach to or identify with. So now there's kind of a void here. If I'm no longer this person, if I'm no longer attached to this set of people, places or things, or then who am I? And why do I still feel stuck? And why can I still not enjoy myself? And why does everything feel very shallow? And what am I supposed to be saying and doing and creating? And I, and I feel very left out and small. 
in the world. But I know that I'm transforming. I know that I've acknowledged certain parts of myself that might have been very uh, traumatic or traumatized here in a very traumatic way that I've had to deal with this transformation. How do I let my inner child out when I have no desire? Because I'm tired. So I, I feel an energy of wanting to unplug. And I, I feel an energy here of not seeing your beauty. I see an energy here of feeling shut out and cold. I feel an energy here of feeling left out. With a desire to do something, but not understanding what it is you're supposed to do or need to do or can do. I see a crying out for help. I'm feeling like, uh, like you just don't fit in. Or you're not understood or accepted. Like the world has kind of turned its back on you. And so you don't even want to look anymore. I feel like you kind of want to be left alone. And I feel like you're crying for help. I feel like there's a, a, a deep, giving, loving soul here. So, I'm going to pause, just take a little break, and, and then I'm going to get into your cards here, okay? Which is objective truth. I'll be right back. Pile number two, um, I was going to pull tarot uh, at some point, but I don't feel I need to pull tarot here for this part because I feel like this is your understanding of something. And I feel like it's really your understanding of yourself here. I don't know necessarily that this is a situation. I mean, it's the situation you're going through, but I feel like it's your whole your whole situation, like your whole life. Okay. So let's look at what the objective truth is here. And then if we need more tarot or if we need to pull tarot, then I will. All right. Wow. Pile two. This is pretty intense. Let's take a look. We have darkness with moon number seven. Moon energy is Pisces energy. And sometimes I do get cancer as well. We have 19 with growth plants heavy earth coming from this Virgo Taurus Capricorn or the number 10 10 is still about endings here okay um we also have the ninth house as if it or they came from all there is the philosophies and laws involved and do it in a big way oh my goodness the ninth house is all about um religion uh, cross-cultural religions learnings education philosophy, wisdom, a lot coming through this card. We have confusion. We have an, uh, antimony, antimony, sorry, very hard for me to say that word, antimony, uh, 27, or the number 9. Okay, we have Dream Thief, Refusal of the Call, 13, or the number 4, and 19, wow, Falling Angel, Spiritual Narcolepsy, these are very powerful, we have two 19s, 19, 19, 10, 10, 
spiritual narcolepsy falling angel oh my goodness we have the lady 29 number 11 or the ace of swords here which is all about truth and clarity ace of swords the lady we have koala spirit spirit has a plan 35 or the number eight here and now 32 or the number five we have the past and the future and then we have this angel looking girl sitting on an egg that says present you are here okay believe and you're being asked to fully believe in yourself and your dreams it's time for that idea that's lived inside your heart to be brought into the world so others can benefit from it believe that you can bring it to life and you will do exactly that oh wow okay this is such a powerful reading pile number two we have disruption 16 or the number seven coming out again so we have seven seven disruption tower energy we have earthworm earth energy virgo taurus capricorn we have the hunter sure-footedness and predestination okay we have adjacent possibilities with 24 or the number six and then we have the fault line and this is 49 or the number 13 coming out again so 13 13 lots of repeating numbers here you guys might be seeing symbol sign synchronicities uh, repeating numbers i do feel this is someone gone through a huge spiritual shift um okay just give me a little bit here okay So I, I feel like you, you're so intuitive here. Okay. I feel like you here are my light workers, you know, um, my psychics, tarot readers of my channel here. I feel like these are, these are very intuitive people here. I feel like you've gone through a spiritual shift and I feel like you're in a very low place here of, energy because i feel it's been very challenging for you so spirit is giving here a message of confirmation and hope that everything that you're experiencing here is absolutely accurate although i think you're in the weeds of it so in the darkness of it that i don't think you're seeing here what it's all for and i know it's so hard to see and think that there could be anything that would counteract us having to experience such pain trust me okay um when we're in it because nothing could make it better and we feel just like we just want to be ignorant and, and make it all leave us alone we don't want to experience what we experience here and so what spirit is showing here is that all great people of this world and i mean we're all great but great people who bring to this world gifts of service and gifts to other people and gifts to humanity are all very special people who have to go through certain experiences in order for them to allow the gift to shine for them to remember who they are for them to get as close to their authentic self by shedding all of the matrixes uh, matrix world their identity their understanding their conditioning their relationships their whole past life which is very very challenging so everything you're experiencing here has been a lifetime if not i don't know like millennia of experience and to let it go and to grieve and shed is such a painful process but uh, out of all the lifetimes your lifetime is one that was chosen to go through such an experience here to allow you to come back for you to remember who you are as an energy as a soul being because there's something you're supposed to give to this world 
that's absolutely beautiful that only you could present to this world that is going to make a major shift to humanity and so because there's so many people here uh, what your gift is is very unique to who you are what support you bring here to other people what other people are able to do because of you bringing this to their awareness because of you being around them because of you being in their life because of you leading example sharing your knowledge your wisdom your understanding them just knowing you allows other people to walk in their greatest truth to do what they're supposed to do like a ripple effect to humanity and you're making the biggest change here so i don't know if you guys have i don't know like you guys might have your own youtube channel maybe you have a following of people maybe you are a counselor a spiritual teacher of sorts here um reiki teacher whatever tarot reader i, I don't know what you guys do here but you guys you might not do it just yet or you might already understand what it is that you could do or have done or your ability or your your gift but I feel like it has not yet blossomed or bloomed and so you're not seeing it but this thing is taking a life of its own and spirit has a plan and there's a need for you to trust that what this is is bigger than anything you could possibly imagine okay so what you're experiencing here will seem like yes it's an experience that you'll forever remember but it's going to be the biggest blessing for you because without this you could never have walked into this and so i feel like you're learning what this is and so you might feel like a novice you might feel like you're not gaining ground in whatever this is you might feel like you're not making a difference you might feel what's it worth you might feel very alone but this what you're walking is your sole purpose why you're here on earth and I feel like this is so big because I feel like you've had to shed and overcome, like I said, uh, many lifetimes of conditioning and experience and traumas, ancestral wounds, everything that was hindering your ability to, to roll this out, to be able to accomplish this, to be able to even understand how to do this to acknowledge your ability to get in tune with this side of yourself. And so I feel like not only is there this thing that you're, this service that you're providing to other people here, but I feel like this opens the doors to so many different possibilities for you that you couldn't even possibly see right now, that you're not seeing right now, which is why we feel very sad we feel very stuck so all you're really experiencing is the here and now which is what you're supposed to experience and so when our present moment here we don't see into the future doesn't reveal or doesn't show to us the potential we could get very frustrated so the objective truth here is that your future is one here that I, I don't think you could have possibly even dreamt into being that you're being called by spirits by the universe to fulfill something here that only you could fulfill on earth to provide to humanity okay this is like you know a person who finds the cure to cancer this is the person who you know um finds out how to make electricity this is the person who finds world peace this is the person who saves millions of people by an act of service here. There's something here that you're bringing to this world that's having a ripple effect. Now it's going to build momentum and it's going to open up other doors. And some doors you're not even going to see open because these are opening doors for other people. And those people are opening doors for other people. And those doors, it's kind of like the popcorn effect, okay? That once one goes off, all the others start going off until all of humanity is is awake in some way here okay so i feel like spirit is acknowledging with this fault line things falling apart around you and spirit is acknowledging an ending 
But what this ending is feels like death because it's part of you that's dying. But Spirit is saying this is the part of you that isn't you. The part that's falling away is a conditioned you that you won't take into your next life. Because your energy is forever here, okay? And so the part of you that remains is your true authentic energy being. And this is the only energy you can be in when you're living your calling, when you're living your truth, when you're living in authenticity. And it feels alone right now, and it might feel alone for a bit, but you are not alone, and spirit is with you. And in fact, I feel there are many souls here with you, but I feel this is building some time. So spirit is acknowledging things fall apart, and the only thing that falls apart in the tower, and with this fault line, is things that weren't built on truth. So conditioning isn't true. Matrix is not true. What is true is who you are inside. So right now you're experiencing suffering and it's acknowledged, but there's also a need for this because in order for you to fulfill whatever you're supposed to fulfill, you have to fully understand this experience and not many people are able to go through this. Okay. And so with this confusion, this is when we're walking up the mountain and there's lots of uh, clouds and we're not seeing what's going on. And we're walking up such a difficult obstacle here. But once we get to the top and we could see past the clouds, we have a whole different perspective of where we came from. Because we could see it from different eyes. We're now at the top of the mountain. We're now seeing everything from an elevated perspective. We're now seeing beyond all this. But when we're in it, when we're getting there, it is very heavy, it is very difficult, and we can't see past certain things. So you're being elevated here, and you're ascending to a greater point here, so you could see. So Spirit wants you to be open, receptive, that's what moon energy is. Spirit does not want you to fear, because I feel like there could be some fear here in, what if all this and nothing happens or what if all this and and now i'm in kind of this energy of something not uh, happening in my life that you start to doubt and you start to question you know and if you do start that support system or project or following or channel or whatever it is websites school whatever thing you're trying to develop here you might start to question and fear that could it possibly pan out could it possibly make a difference and spirit is saying trust that this is exactly what you're supposed to be doing that this is going to build momentum allow yourself to be a novice here in in this different stages and sometimes it comes with a non, no, uh, not knowing and it is frustrating when you are very intuitive here to not know and sometimes we start to doubt and, and question ourselves even though we might be intuitive but you are headed in the right direction predestination sure-footedness i feel like you probably would do better having you know true confirmation here from spirits take this as true confirmation than from spirits because you're doing something in a very very big way and I feel like this is something that is going to stand the test of time and last for many, many, many generations with the oak leaves and the acorns. Okay, oak trees last forever here for many, many generations. So more trees here. Yeah, you're definitely bringing in healing, life. And I, I feel like this is going to allow people to grow, allow, I, I feel a very strong, healing, secure energy here coming from whatever it is that you're doing here. So if people feel not secure, if people feel like they're needing to heal from something, I feel like you're bringing this to them. Either an understanding or physical healing, but I feel like you're bringing this to them through your um i don't know through your whatever you're doing here word action being you 
service, whatever you're providing here. So I'm going to get some final words. I feel like this is your reading, but let's just get some final words here for you. The final words for pile number two. What are they needing to know about their current situation here? Clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good spirit. Thank you so, so much for this beautiful message for pile number two. Please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message. And thank you so much, Pile 2, for allowing me to tap into your energy and the energy around you at this time. So now I know why this is kind of coming through as a misconception here, because I feel like it's so clouded here. Like, you're not at the top of the mountain. You're not at the pinnacle yet, so you don't see it. You're experiencing what you're experiencing, which is very challenging. And so because this is your experience, you're kind of doubting what's to come here. Okay, so spirit does not want you to doubt this. We have the three, I have abundance. The most abundant card I could possibly pull from the tarot is the Empress. Okay, and this is birthing something into the world. Great abundance here. Lots of unconditional love coming from this Empress energy, the chariot. I'm going to keep them as they are coming out here. The four of wands and the two of pentacles. Chariot. This is all about forward movement. And this is all about integrating shadow parts of ourself in order to move forward. So I feel like you're doing a lot of shadow work. I feel like there's lots of parts of yourself that you're still integrating into who you are. And so why you feel stuck or feel the way you feel is because you're doing the work that needs to be done in order for things to get moving. Because the universe isn't going to move you forward before you're prepared. So you're doing the groundwork right now. If you feel stuck, if you feel like things aren't moving, if you feel like... Uh, yeah, like you're going to be stuck forever or it's never going to move. That's not true. It's happening like this for a reason. There's a need for you to integrate different parts of yourself that might be still in your ego. Because we have an ego death does not mean we completely shed certain parts of us. We then start to pick apart a lot of how we are out of habit or inner subconscious that we aren't aware of because we've always been in a certain energy without recognizing. So... I feel like through recognizing and questioning self every day, day in, day out in the present moment, what am I doing? How am I speaking? What, why am I doing what I'm doing? We start to shed light in parts of ourself that kept us stuck, that keeps us stuck so that it could free us so we can move forward. So you won't be moving forward full steam ahead until certain things are resolved here. But what you're headed into here is a rite of passage. Four of Wands. This is a milestone here. Okay. This is celebration this is being celebrated so you're coming into union of self you're coming into people recognizing you for what it is that you're bringing forward here and being celebrated it is such a rite of passage and this is exactly w where you're headed although I, I feel as though we're because of the nature of this reading which is you know what you're seeing versus what the objective truth is what you're seeing is non-movement what you're seeing is ups and downs, maybe more downs and ups. And maybe what you're seeing is nothing could possibly go up that's just going to come down again. So I feel like there is some mind getting in the way here, some mind chatter. Okay, so just know that without experiencing what you're experiencing, there is no way that you'd be able to roll out what you are about to roll out here, which is your true purpose and your calling. And look at all these sheep kind of coming to this person here. Okay, so I, I feel like there's a bunch of lost people that you're uh, going to be able to provide service for. And yes, will you always be, you know, up in energy? Probably not. You know, you're human. We go up, we go down. But I feel like for the most part, what you're experiencing here is so profound that it allows you then to be able to manage and deal with what it is you're supposed to be dealing when it comes to other people and their experience. That despite the ups and downs, you're still able to get through this. But I feel like you're having to learn all this stuff, okay? And this is quite the experience here. 
So you might feel like you don't know or you're still novice, and that's absolutely fine. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the experience. Although it might not be enjoyable now, you'll see why it was much necessary here in order for you to be able to do what it is that you're going to do here because I feel you're going to find the answers here that other people haven't been able to do in many different ways, okay? So I feel so blessed that you're here at my channel. I wish you guys the very, very best. And I think this is sufficient for your reading. Pile number two. Bless you guys. If you were drawn to another pile, it could be another aspect of your current energy sitting there. If not, then I will see you soon. Bye. Hello, my beautiful. Pile number three. You picked the cut glass knife holder. Um, let's put that actually over here so I don't drop it. What are we looking at? Well, we are looking at your existing energy right now in your current situation and it's whatever is the most energetically charged right now okay around you and how you're perceiving that situation or your understanding of it and then we're going to be looking at the objective truth so this could be something you're not wanting to see or suppressing in some way or maybe you know but or denying or maybe you need clarity on it because you're not sure but either way sometimes the truth hurts Sometimes healing hurts. So my intention is never to cause pain or to, to make you hurt. It's just to provide truths here so you can do what you will to heal. Now, again, I'm a pair of talking hand, so I can't say I'm the all truth being. But if you resonate with this beginning and this being your current situation and it speaks to you, then chances are this is the objective truth. Okay, and that's what I was intending with spirit here. But if you're not resonating with this, then don't make anything fit here because there's lots on the internet and not everything's going to be a sign. Usually it is. If you're if you're there, it's a sign, but not everything if you're in some sort of funk. Okay, so I just felt I needed to say that. Um, but always use your intuition. What you will see, feel, or hear to determine whether this message resonates for you. Only you can do that. I cannot do that. No other reader is able to do that for you, okay? So let's take a look uh, at your uh, how you're perceiving your current situation here. 32 with jeweled web connectivity, or the number 5. We have 19 with freedom, or the number 10. 10 is all about endings. Five is all about challenge. Hmm, okay. We have 20 with ghosts. Crow energy coming through. Crows are about communication and they deliver communication between worlds. Lots of crows. Okay, we have 30 with Pallas Athena with Think. Hmm, okay. I'm getting masculine and feminine energy from this. Okay, pigeon. Home energy. We got rejection. We got a mortification here, and this is 68. Sixty-eight, or the number fourteen, or the number five. Mice, twenty-three, number five coming out again. A mirrored number. We have thirty-two, twenty-three, and then we have the seven of clubs, which is the seven of wands. Seven of wands is being in a, in a defensive position, but one that we're we have the higher ground in order to fight. Stand for what we believe in. The mice is an irritant it's kind of an annoyance okay let's put that here i'm gonna move this up so you guys can see all right um we have the wombat spirit 68 okay um be at home Didn't we get 68 here? Yes, 68, 68. Interesting. Okay. And then we had 32, 23. We have 49 with Observer, a Fox, and an Eye. 
piece or a telescope looking at the moon and the stars. Okay. Bravery. You're being asked to make a tough decision that you've been putting off because of fear, which is understandable, but you do have the strength and bravery to make this decision and you will feel so much lighter when you do. We have triumph number seven. Okay. Seven is the chariot in um, the tarot, in traditional tarot, with this triumph. This is being successful. We have the bat. This is air energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. We have crow. Yes, crow energy, definitely, I was feeling here. Um, air energy, some more. So heavy Gemini, Libra, Aquarius coming through. Also, we had stars here, which is Aquarius energy. It's confirmation. Crow. We have, I'm also feeling Scorpio energy coming through quite strong as well. We have the runaway, secrets running from problems. And then we have a cage here with the door open and a key. Keys are all about solutions, answers. Opening the door to the next phase of something here. And we're feeling an ending with mortification. And we have victory. That's what this triumph is. 28 or number 10, which is also about endings. Victory. And we have the mentor, number six, with the owl in mid-flight. Okay, the mentor. Just give me a little bit here because I'm not quite sure what I'm picking up so much in this energy. This is an interesting energy here. I, I might need to pull some tarot to get a little bit more. Because uh, let me talk through it because I don't know that I have the full picture here. I mean, this pigeon, this bee at home, something uh, hitting you close to home here or wanting to feel like home here. And then we have the victory, but there's something you're not seeing. Like you're avoiding in some way, like the bat doesn't see. We have here running away from problems with the runaway secrets crows is all about the hidden what we're not really seeing so much and then we have a lot of air energy which is thinking because air is all the swords which is about thought but i feel there's like an energy of looking thinking observing watching bravery triumph victory so are we hesitating on doing something here because we might fear some sort of rejection. Now, owls are all about wisdom, and wisdom comes through a knowledge. And so I feel like with think and observer, it's like your your understanding of something gives you knowledge, but then what how you act and what you do with that is the wisdom that you use in order to have an experience and become successful. The mentor, I don't know if this is your energy or someone around you, but the mentor teaches us is a guiding example here. So I don't know if you're looking at your situation, trying to understand something or learn something here so that you are able to do something. Ghosts run away. It's like avoidance energy I'm getting. But then we have freedom here, which is setting yourself free um we had a cage that was open didn't we right here setting yourself free from something here okay i don't know what this is i mean i really don't i'm being very honest with you let me see i'm gonna pull some tarot to see if we could see a little bit more here what is pile three's understanding of something what is their perception of something here that they're not seeing or that they're yeah I, I feel really like you're not seeing or you think you're not seeing something so you're having to act in the dark i feel like something also feels like it's it needs to end or has been over or feels like it's over
Okay, the spirits uh, having to get empowered about something here. Spirit, can we please get a clear and concise message for pile three? What is their perception right now about this current situation that's coming through in these cards? Clear and concise for the greatest and highest good of pile three. Please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message. And thank you so much, pile number three, for allowing me to tap into your energy and the energy around you at this time. I'm truly blessed. Thank you so, so much. Okay, so what is this about? We have the Knight of Wands in reverse. I'm going to read them as they come out. Uh, three of Pentacles in reverse. The Eight of Swords, or sorry, Eight of Wands in reverse. Three of Cups in reverse. Nine of Wands in reverse. And the Lovers in reverse. And we have the Emperor. Okay. Aries energy and Gemini energy coming through. So I feel there was a stuck energy of you not doing something. Like I said, it's thinking, it's looking, it's observing, it's trying to understand, trying to use the wisdom so that you know what it is you're supposed to do. But I, I feel like either you're fearing rejection or you've experienced rejection. And so I feel like what, what Spirit is showing here is that where you could take action, I feel like you, there's a stuck energy. Okay, because we see the emperor, but like we have this tortoise here. Tortoises are very, very, very slow. But the emperor is all about taking action, being empowered. And this all shows the opposite to me. Someone who's not taking action, someone who's not collaborating or working together, someone who's not building something, someone who's not showing up or doesn't feel like they have the ability or the talent to do something here, stuck not moving forward, not choosing, surrendering, giving up before even getting going here. Three of Cups has so many meanings for me, and I'm not quite sure what it means here, but I, I don't feel it's a good energy here because I feel like it's a shutting out energy. So I feel like you're shutting something out here. The devil in reverse. This is also stuck energy, but it's understanding where we're unhealthy, where we're stuck in order to break out of these binds. Because the devil is an illusion where we think we're stuck. And freedom in the cage open is like this, this devil in the, in the reverse. That's freedom. It's being free from. So... I don't know, like for me, this is the party card sometimes in reverse. This is also uh, drinking, um, partying, you know, surface relationships, addictions um, with the devil here, distractions. So is is a is something going on in your world right now that is not allowing you to move forward specifically when it comes to a major life decision here with the lovers being empowered to choose a path a person a destined thing here that's supposed to be happening here for you because you're breaking out of some sort of prison quote unquote that uh, that is very close to home here, but is keeping you from home. Because I feel like when we choose the lovers, it's the path that leads us home. It's the person, the place, the thing that leads us home. Like this homing pigeon, be at home. Because I feel like we're needing to shed something here with mortification. That's transformation. That's allowing the, the, the dead to fall away, to make room for the new. So we feel we are rejected here. Or we might be sitting in rejection because we are experiencing 
a part of ourselves here that we're having to resolve. So let's say if there is a part of you that you're not very proud of, or that you understand to be a distraction, an addiction, or a way of being here that you're trying to resolve in some way, but you're sitting in this rejection, it results in you being removed. It results in you not succeeding in something here or being victorious and taking action in something. But I, I feel like you want to be liberated. I feel like you're connected to whatever the thing is here. And I mean, this is a, a, I don't know, like the mice is something that's constantly there, gnawing and gnawing and gnawing. And so if this is a lifestyle thing here that's getting in the way of your happiness, you're not quite sure how to feel your way out of it. You're not quite sure how to, yeah, free yourself out of this. I think you're trying to understand how you can break free how you can move forward and be successful in life here based on what you understand of yourself and your experience without experiencing rejection allowing yourself to surrender parts here that need to go so that you can move forward and be happy and be free mm -hmm. what else spirits or pull some more i'm going to get a deeper layer here we have the page of cups can we get a little bit more for pile one? What are their, what's their perception here of their situation? Ace of Pentacles in reverse. And the Nine of Wands in reverse coming out again. The Hierophant in reverse. The Six of Wands. I'm not surprised to see that uh, in reverse. And then we have the Six of Swords in reverse. And then we have the Two of Pentacles and the Hermit under that. I'm going to flip the uh, Two of Pentacles because I don't read bottom of the deck in reverse. So something was coming through. What was it, spirits now? Oh, yeah. Why I probably couldn't pick up any energy, or at least the story. When I first laid the cards, it was uh, challenging. I think there's something here you're not wanting someone to see. Maybe you're not wanting to see or deal with. And it could be a part of yourself that touches an aspect of your life here. Like, uh, you know, a part of yourself. I don't know if it's uh, distracting yourself by drinking, by doing unhealthy things here. You're trying to maybe get better or trying to understand a certain part of yourself or release a certain part of yourself so you can embrace a new part of yourself but i feel it's been back and forth and maybe you're not sure how to prioritize you're reflecting you're trying to understand certain parts of yourself so i feel you feel your life's on hold you're not able to move forward I feel there's something you're wanting to open your heart to this is creative energy this is opening our heart space showing love coming forward this is also you know a pretty novice energy here sometimes it could be the immature energy so maybe we feel like we're too unprepared here because of something we're experiencing and with the hierophant in reverse again this is home energy because it is our, our values or traditions but in the reverse it's like it's keeping us prisoner it's a way of being or or something here that we're doing that we understand that is keeping us stuck it's sort of like throwing out the baby with the bathwater in some way because we're very much stuck to an idea or fixated on an upbringing or a value or an understanding of something or an ideology of some things Something that we understand, but I, I feel like you're not capable or feel not capable of being successful in planting the seed and succeeding. And we have another cage with the door open. Okay, I love when spirits, I mean, there's so many cards that could come out that I can use here and we're talking about freedom, open cage. This in reverse, this is not succeeding. This is someone who feels like they would fail. Maybe someone who's not confident enough. And so we feel stuck instead of feeling free. And we haven't even tried. We've been hurt. We're hurt. We're a spiritual warrior. And we retreat. We don't have enough in us to plant a seed. 
but we stay stuck in, in troubles. We stay stuck in, in mental prisons. We stay stuck in, in situations that keep repeating sort of um, mental anguish. Doesn't allow us to break free so that we can move to calmer waters. And sometimes when we move to calmer waters, we bring our struggle struggles with us. Because in this boat, he has the five swords. Six swords, I'm sorry. He has six swords. And sometimes we need to leave certain things behind in order for us to get moving. But I feel like there's something here you're not uh, able to leave behind or figure out. So you feel trapped, not free, like you can't succeed. And it's like a, a very turbulent energy. And maybe it's sometimes you feel you can and sometimes you feel you, you have no control at all. Stuck. I feel very stuck. And this could be where we're hanging on to something too afraid to let go because what we might have to risk or we choose our comfort zone but it is a stuck energy so in your situation i i feel you feel a little bit helpless i feel you really really want success i feel you really want to be brave take action have success but you feel blind you feel helpless or hopeless or amateur or like you need to know something more or you're not seeing something you need to think more you're kind of agitated here you don't feel like you're in control you feel like you're experiencing rejection i want to see why this mortification death card is here i mean that's all about transformation and, and endings here but why are we are we having to end a certain part of our life here that is holding us back? Spirit, can we get clarification on this mortification? That rhymed? Yes, devil. Exactly what I'm saying, y'all. And the emperor. Look at that. You guys saw in the shuffle. That came out in your first thing, spread. This is unhealthy ways of being. Addictions, obsessions, just unhealthy ways. And it could just be unhealthy because we're stuck in an old way of being with the Hierophant in reverse. This is believing something to be true or understanding a value or something we were brought up to believe and believe it so much that it, it restricts us. So we're held back, but it's illusion. And if it is, like I said, something unhealthy here, I, I feel like you're wanting to put an end to it and get empowered take power back into your own hands but i feel something's very very slow and stuck even this emperor is made of stone which is stuck so you feel you cannot get empowered you feel very very stuck you feel like you can't let go of the chains you feel like you can't open the door to freedom so maybe you're avoiding and you're not quite sure but i feel this hits you close to home it's impacting you in a very profound way here Okay, so I, I think that's enough to paint the picture of what it is that you're perceiving your situation to be. Let's see what the objective truth is then here for you, okay? I do want to put the caveat warning here. Sometimes the truth isn't always pleasant, okay? But I have a feeling yours is going to be pleasant because, I mean, this is not fun, okay? So, I mean, this might be challenging to hear, but I think it's it's going to it's going to set you free. Let's see. 33, yes. Joyful Muse, inspiration. Woo! All right. Joyful Muse, inspiration. Look, paintbrushes. You had that. I was going to mention it, but I don't know, like... Uh, I feel an artist here. We saw the Page of Cups, which is all about creativity. Look at this. This guy has paintbrushes too. Okay, so I, I feel like you're definitely a creative person here, okay? Either through writing, painting, drawing, uh, word, lyrical, whatever it is, but or, or even a musician here with the music. But I feel like you're a creative person here, okay? So take that as confirmation. But we have Joyful Muse Inspiration. On the verge of creating something beautiful. We have 23 with cleansing and storms. Five is all, again, about the challenge. Three and three is six, which is the lovers coming through. That decision to choose the person, place, thing that we're supposed to be choosing. Okay. Adventure with south, number two. We have the moon planet here with defend accept let your feelings tell you how to moon is receptive energy 
the moon is subconscious energies it's also a divine feminine energy we have expansion we have impasse there's that moon again impasse we have the sap of the moon planet moon coming through again moon is about fears okay um maybe not seeing things clearly seeing things in one way but it's another stuff in our subconscious sap of the moon planet the impasse card is, is when the universe puts obstacles in front of us in order for us to have to find a way the way that we thought we could get there is blocked for a reason okay we have the earth's heart with 52 or the number seven the core of the matter we have the key key to the cage i just heard and we have three three again look at that how synchronistic three three you guys might be seeing three 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 four threes and then we have the eight of pentacles or the eight of diamonds here that's the eight of pentacles which is having the ability to put in the dedication the discipline the effort the talent to create something to keep putting in time energy effort okay is a very consistent dedicated card here in the tarot and the key is all about answer solutions opening the door to that cage spider spirit more creativity make your dreams real 56 or the number 11 11 is ascended master's number here beautiful and spirits are all about creativity i'm also feeling home energy coming through again because spirits build their their home web higher power number four look at that oh my goodness i just got goosebumps four stability home okay all about home and family emotions foundations mother energy higher power and look at this being fed into the crown chakra third eye energy here downloads all right give one of the best feelings we can experience is giving to others when we do so we feel lifted up and our lives improve greatly because of someone else's happiness think of one way you can give to another today okay we have memories of love number six coming through again beautiful six like i say is is that choice that lovers memories of love we have scorpion energy so um this is water energy cancer scorpio pisces although scorpio is coming through i'm also feeling heavy fire believe it or not with this one aries leo sag for those of you guys um, looking for zodiac confirmation here, you might have um, Aries, Leo, Sag, Sun, or a, a Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, Sun. Okay. Scorpion. Defensive energy. The founder, Foundations Community. That's that home energy. And look at the two rats here. More mice energy. So rats, like I said, are annoyance, but rats also run. Rats also avoid. Rats also get very spooked very easily. These rats, this one has a sword and this one has a hammer. So I feel like these rats have some sort of tool here that I don't think they realize they have. One has to embrace the truth and one has to understand they have the ability to do something here rather than run. Okay. Next, we have third chakra, Archangel Chamuel with 37 or the number 10. Pen is about endings, so there could be new beginnings. Third chakra is solar plexus. This is confidence. Confidence allows us to break free, find freedom, so we don't run. Confidence. This is having the ability to do something here and understanding that we, we are capable. So 50, 73. So 73, number 10 again, we have Thanatos. Thanatos and look spider web more spider webs creativity energy i'm going to read this thanatos because i'm being called to do so before i get into your um channeling and then we might pull some tarot as well um if we're not certain where we're going with this thing but i feel i know where this is going um all right where are we one two three one more 
boop. Okay. That's pretty much the same thing, but I will put that there. Okay. So Thanatos with death. It is tempting to oversimplify death and sum it up as transformation, but the true archetypal resonance of Thanatos cannot be easily assimilated or contained. Death is ongoing and omnipresent. An eternal response to the gift of birth, witnessing the ending of another being, creature, phase, or stage, has a deep has deep consequences for the psyche. We are forever changed by the Thanatos as it sweeps us under its wings, making us relinquish control in every form. It leaves a mark of ash upon our heart, signifying we have touched the cusp of the underworld and will return to the land of the living eventually with more compassion and wisdom to share. This capacity is needed in our world. One who has faced the annihilation of Thanatos annihilation of Thanatos can face anything. When this card appears, it signifies an initiation into the underworld. When in light, it means grieving, mourning, bearing witness to all that is. And when it's in the dark attribute, it is fear, intense, intensitivity to old age, illness, and the dying. Okay. Pile three. Holy camoli, camoli, camoli. You're going through a massive, massive change here in your life. I feel you understand it, but I feel like you're seeing it as something that's restricting you right now. Okay. Um, as limiting. And look, death coming out here with mortification. So I feel like you're seeing the, the death of something and recognizing it, but I feel like it's in the shadow attribute of the death because I feel like, yes, although the death transformation is happening here, there's a need for you to still allow there to be movement. There's still, it needs you to engage here with the receptivity I feel like you're shut out and avoiding something here. So I feel like rather than you being open and leaning into it, the death, the transformation, the things that feel a little bit unpleasant here, I feel like it's easier to run away, shut out and resist areas instead of being open to it. Because what that's causing is the thing here that I think you're not liking. The rejection and the pain and the not knowing, not seeing, and wanting to be successful. Because I feel as though what Spirit is saying is that within you, embracing whatever this is and leaning into it, I feel like there's confidence here that lies within you that will allow there to be expansion for you to choose Okay, with the, with the lovers here, to make the choice towards what you're supposed to kind of be leaning into. That this death transformation, what you're experiencing here, is the cleansing that you need in order to step into the new. That you're coming from the old, the old uh, part of yourself into the new parts of yourself. But you won't be able to experience new parts of yourself if you're still attached to old parts of yourself. That there is something here that is more important here, okay, with this earth, earth's heart. This is the core. This is underneath all of these layers. There's the truth here. And so I feel like it's easy to get distracted and it's easy to stay in distractions. And I feel it's easy for us to hit a roadblock and then for us to get stuck, frozen, and lose confidence and then feel like we're not supposed to be going down this way or that we don't can't expand so we might sit in protective energy defensive energy or at least we might be not allowing what we know to come to us the truth our intuition the downloads what we're supposed to be doing allow us to embrace and act in our highest truth because there's something here you're supposed to be creating there's something here you're supposed to be building. And I feel it's close to home. I feel it's, it's, it adds stability to your life. I feel like it's the true core of who you are. It's bringing you back to self. It's an honest truth. 
but instead of embracing it or being confident enough to see that this is a truth of uh, a core being of how you can create something i think there is avoidance and an in denial energy i'm feeling here with the ghosts of uh, maybe i don't know like maybe yeah it, it, well for sure it's like whatever needs to go away because it's part of your past has to be put to bed we cannot be hanging out with the ghosts of our past life here okay so experiences lifestyles beliefs conditionings i think have to be put to bed where they no longer serve you and i think you're still walking amongst ghosts and by doing this we avoid walking into what we're supposed to because there might be fear of failure with the six of wands in reverse you want to succeed but there's fear of failure so we don't act so we avoid so we run so we don't see so we pretend so we avoid we distract we feel rejected but spirit is saying there's a need for you to understand that if you hit an impasse that means there's another way to it that you have to be open look at his arms are open moon receptivity receiving downloads understanding what we're receiving here okay open hands you're receiving is supposed to be guiding us like a guiding light towards where we're supposed to be going i feel like you're being guided towards something here that is going to allow you to create and it, it it will require you to put an end to something that no longer serves you and I feel like what you're putting an end to here might be something you're attached to or have been attached to and have a very difficult time detaching from. But it's not serving you and you probably already know this. But I feel like what you don't know here is what you're supposed to be creating is something quite spectacular. And so this painful process of going through the storm, having to cleanse and go through all this is so painful. But what you're ready to receive here, my goodness, pile number three with this sap of the moon planet is an absolute blessing from God. And it's coming to you and it's it's being handed to you and it's going to allow for your life to expand in, in such a profound way that all that's going to matter is that. That your whole life and world is going to revolve around that because that is the true core of what matters to you most. And all these other things it will not matter. All these other ghosts will be put to bed that you're hanging out with. Okay, and I say ghosts hanging out with, I hope you can read past the um, metaphor. I feel like there's actions you're doing, partaking in, ways of being you're partaking in, or just in an energy here that is tired and old. So the creativity that comes through, the inspiration, you're going to create parts of your world that are absolutely magical. It's going to open up a part of you. So if you're musically inclined, you're going to write the most beautiful record of all time or play the most beautiful piece of music you've ever created. If you're a painter, you're going to create the most beautiful painting you've ever created and possibly the most beautiful painting of the world, the most beautiful piece of music of the world. You're going to create the most beautiful, precious thing of the world is what's coming for you, is what's handed to you. And you're saying, I cannot and i will wait or sit here in the things that are tired but you can not only can you you are going to and to get through this storm is to release everything that wants to go without resistance to allow the storm to do its thing it's painful here when we go through storms, if we're caught out in the storm, right? We get wet, we might, I don't know, get stuck in the snowstorm or in a rainstorm or in a hurricane. Okay, but, but I feel like the storm has to pass. And when the storm passes here, then we're creating. But I, I feel like we're hanging out in the storm. And feeling like, I don't know, like we belong in the storm here for some reason. And so we're not allowing ourselves to understand that the storm is needing to run its course on its own. It doesn't need you to do anything aside from 
be receptive to what it's doing and then allow yourself to watch it, to witness what it's doing so that you can create something here once it's done. But I don't know. I, I just feel like you're creating pain here for yourself. So I, I feel like there's a situation here that you're not giving to and you're also not really fully receiving from because you're avoiding or shutting yourself out because you're too distracted by what's not working in your life right now as something that has you stuck. So the freedom that you're seeking, the joy, the victory, the core importance here of what matters is behind a door here that's shut. And you have everything you need. You're being guided and given everything you need. And you might be seeing the door as the obstacle or the thing here as why you cannot pass. But Spirit is saying you can pass. Whatever you are trying, because I do feel like you maybe, I don't know, you're looking somewhere and you keep looking towards it. But where you're looking and seeing is not the pathway. That's not where you're supposed to be going and doing, okay? I feel like if you keep looking to the past or doing something here with some old energy, Spirit's going to put a block, big fat block in your way. Because that's not where you're supposed to be going. You're supposed to be moving forward. And I feel like you're doing circles in the past. I feel like you're living in the past or hanging around in the past or, I don't know, not receiving the abundance the universe is wanting to give to you. But you have to be able to understand that you can give to a situation here. But in order to do this, you have to open that door and detach from past energy. From, I don't know, hanging out in storms here. Okay. I don't know. Like, are you like a storm seeker? Like a drama seeker in some way here? I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to get some more here. What is Pile 3 not seeing, spirits? What is it that they need to be aware of in their current situation? What is the objective truth here? Pile three's current situation. Can we get a little bit more? Thank you so much, spirits, for this clear and concise message for pile three. We have, yeah, the four of pentacles. That's that stuck energy hanging on to the ghosts of the past or seeing what we need to let go of in order to make way for the new. We're stuck, not moving forward in something that doesn't emotionally fulfill us. Because at one point we might have been emotionally fulfilled or invested. And when we're invested and emotionally fulfilled at one point and then it no longer does it, we have a tough time walking away from it. So we stay stuck there, but it's not bringing fulfillment. And at the same expense, we miss out on something that is going to be joyful. So we're hanging on to dead. And then we feel rejected, left out in the cold. Okay, we saw rejection here. It, it's feeling left out in the cold. And the Five of Pentacles is one where we can get out of. Because the church here, the door is open. Okay, that means we can go in and seek refuge. But we're sitting out in the cold rather than going into the church because the, the key's in your hands. Something here is in your hands that you're able to do. But in order to do this, we have to trust to let go and walk away and detach from something that is our, our comfort zone or that we feel we are bound to or connected to in some way that we can't let go of. Justice, Libra energy. So we could bring balance, so we could bring justice, so we can uh, go towards what actually matters here. I see a child here, which is all about the inner child birthing something here that we're supposed to be creating. We're turning our back on it, okay? And, and we're thinking about what could be fair, how we could bring balance. We're seeing something or thinking we see something, but we're actually not seeing. And that's why the bat was coming out and the, all the blind eyes, because we're turning our back on what we can create. And we're fixed. We're stuck. We're fixed in our position rather than acknowledging something we're supposed to be creating here. You're supposed to be creating something. Pile number three. Something very beautiful here that only you can create. And it would require you walking away from something here that isn't serving you. The the page of wands, exploration, okay? And the lovers coming out again. And this is making the choice. Choosing that person, place, thing that we're destined to choose. That's our calling. That's really matters. Okay, 
we haven't chosen it. We haven't explored it. We haven't gone down that path. And I feel like with the pages coming out, I feel like you feel not prepared. Pages, you know, someone who could be immature, like I said, are still learning. But I feel like it's a lack of confidence here. But this page of wands doesn't really wait until the confidence comes. This page of wands explores and, and builds the confidence. Seeks the confidence here by ex exploring. But I feel like he has to make the choice to go down this path rather than sitting here idle or sitting here with things that aren't working and hanging on to things that are tired and over and not emotionally fulfilling. So what are you being asked to do? Pile number three. And what is pile number three being asked to do then? What is pile three being asked to do? Clear and concise message here for the greatest and highest good of pile three spirits. What are they being asked to do? Because yeah, you, you guys are supposed to be creating something here. There's the devil again. Capricorn energy. Very stuck energy. If this is addictions, yes. This is this is my addictions here. Okay. This is glutton card. And this is immediate gratification. This is someone who could be a hedonist living in the moment, not looking at what matters here. In order to find emotional fulfillment for self in a, in a pure, authentic way, we got to get to the core of what matters. We cannot be stuck in addictions, obsessions, and old ways of being and being bound by something here. Spirit is showing that that's not what is going to help you. There needs to be a release and an, uh, maybe identifying that that's where you're at. I feel like you knew that was where you're at, but I don't necessarily know that you know this is you're held back by this or this is why you cannot succeed. This is not taking a chance. This is not exploring, like I said, not taking the risk. The fool doesn't know where he's jumping into, but he takes a chance here in order to live life. This is the, you know, this is the same, if it's in the reverse, the same as that four of pentacles is being very stuck not to wanting to leave our comfort zone. So we're not taking action here because we feel we need to experience a stuckness or we are in some sort of an addictive behavior. I don't feel this is true. I feel like, I mean, it's true it's happening, but I feel like the objective truth here is that you have more power, more control over what's happening here. Two of Wands. This is that having to choose again. Do we choose the path of our Dharma, what we're supposed to do, or do we stay in our comfort zone? And we're not choosing. We're not choosing. We're not seeing. We're not being honest. Ace of Swords in reverse. This is where we lie to self. We're not clear about something because we're lying to self. We're not getting honest. We're not seeing the truth for what it is justice in reverse therefore we don't bring balance we don't create injustice here and i feel the injustice is to self because of the energy you're sitting in so we don't manifest the two of cups okay this is again we saw lovers it could be a relationship here a balance give and take a partnership give and take where we can receive love give love with another person here i feel it is blocked until we're able to give and receive. This is what this is. This is giving of ourselves, volunteering, um, donating, giving without sort of any expectation. And then this is also being open enough to receive. This is that receptive energy. Receiving. Gifts from the universe, from other people. This is a balance give and take. This is a balance card. This is a balance card. Justice is a balance card. And we see the, the scales of justice here. I feel like things are imbalanced here in your life because there's a need for you to give and a need for you to receive. So whichever you're stuck in right now, you need to really examine. Are we not giving because we're choosing immediate gratification here or some sort of energy here where we're being this is it's also selfish energy because of devil we're being steered by illusions and feeling bound which keeps us very stuck not happy not balanced but it also doesn't allow us to lead to the true core of who we are and what we deserve and what we can create because I feel there's something you're creating that you're turning your back on and that you're not choosing. 
that you're not able to create right now okay and i feel you're stuck here so i want to see what i mean for all of you guys it's something different for your creation but i'm going to see if i could see what it is your what is this potential here that you're able to create if you are able to give and receive i feel like yeah instead of giving and receiving i feel again avoidance not seeing not deciding not choosing being stuck being fixed hanging on to things that need to be over in some way and spirit saying the objective truth is there is a way to expand and a way for you to expand is to be able to allow yourself to create something here worthwhile okay because what you're creating here i don't feel is worthwhile i feel like you're creating more in the south node which is your past you're creating more of what you don't want to see in your life by continuing doing what you're doing. So what is it here that you have the ability here to create, Spirit? What does pile number three have the ability to create? What are we showing as this objective truth for pile number three? One more, right? Two more. There we go. Okay. Hierophant in reverse. Okay. So definitely once we acknowledge this, we have to deal with some sort of upbringing belief value system here that i feel is keeping you stuck in life stuckness okay so spirit is saying what are you going to be able to create here well i feel like once you create this you're going to create freedom or create this once you acknowledge this you're going to create freedom okay because we saw a whole bunch of cages with doors being open we see the key so i feel like you're feeling very stuck here in some sort of belief system that it, you don't have to yes seeing the truth about this judgment an awakening okay and and when we see the truth for what it is and it's that's it's the sort of truth that's the ace of swords in the upright we have to then be open to what the universe wants to give to us okay and once we see this truth and look ten of pentacles in sorry ten of cups in reverse this is ultimate emotional fulfillment this could be two families coming together. This is commitment for a happy future, emotionally happy um, families coming together to build a life together. This could be, you know, the epitome of what we would find emotionally satisfying. It is in the reverse. So Spirit is saying there needs to be an acknowledgement on a review of ideology upbringing and what you value and a real opening of the eye space to wake yourself up and i don't think you've waken yourself up here so you're missing out on what you can create this is that creative energy here rejection but coming out again universe handing you this gift of love you not being able to receive this gift of love you turning your back on something here turning your back on freedom so I don't know, like maybe you feel like you're free, but you're not free. I feel like this spirit wants to give you freedom. That's what you're going to create some sort of freedom in your life where you're bound, where you're stuck to a belief system structure. Spirit is handing you something here. And you feel like you can't take it. Again, nine of wands in reverse not even taking the chance this is us kind of retreating we're retreating instead of acknowledging instead of facing something here there's too much fear there's a lot of fear here and i feel like this guy has got a lot of armor on here so i feel he doesn't want to get hurt traversing through all these emotions here there's a need to go into our subconscious to take a look at our ideology and what it is we're hanging on to and, and really question this because it's at the expense of you creating something beautiful here. Anxiety, nine of swords. And that the, 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 the demons that we are thinking are lurking here are actually a figment of our imagination. They're not as big as we think that the real demon is the fact that we're missing out on something because of our mind set of, our mind state or set of mind what's it called our state of mind our state of mind has us restricted our state of mind has us anxious our state of mind keeps us immobilized our state of mind does not allow us because we're perceiving something to be dangerous and fearful and our subconscious here is, is, is brewing from somewhere, but it needs to be called out. It needs to be acknowledged. What was a belief that we carried that no longer serves us? 
it's getting in the way of us. It's making us not even allow us to have a fair fight here. So I don't see what you're creating because, again, all of you guys, like I said, I don't know. Is it a piece of music? Is it art? Is it a family? Is it a child? You know, is it what is this thing here? It's something that I feel is your ultimate emotional happiness. And it's very close to home. So I do feel a lot of family energy coming through here, okay? It's very close to home. And if you're, you know, a musician that is very wrapped up in the in the music world, you know that that's your music family, right? If you're an artist, it's your artist family. If you're a family person here wanting to have children, then, I mean, it's your raising your kids. Your legacy, what you leave behind for your kids. And I feel like whatever this is, this potential is not being realized, recognized, lived. What really matters because you're turning your back on this opportunity. And so, is the universe standing in front of you not letting you pass? Because if that's the case, there's a way around this. But I feel like there needs to be an acknowledgement instead of seeing, you know, an illusion here. And maybe being very much uh, in an energy here of perceiving the worst or anticipating the worst. So feeling frozen and giving up. There's a need for you to understand that you have all the tools that you are within you, that you have within you the capability to build this confidence to succeed. And Spirit is giving you this as information here that you need to be receptive to. Okay, and I mean, take this reading as confirmation that you are capable of this, that you are being gifted this. Whatever you're inspired to act towards, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Do not talk yourself out of it. It's coming to you for a reason. Pile three. Okay. I'm going to get final words here just because of the intensity of this reading. And I feel like these readings have been very, very intense. Um, what is spirit wanting you to know then? Final words for pile three. What does pile three need to know? Final words for pile three. Anything I've missed. Something that's going to spark some sort of insight for pile three because I, I don't know that i've connected the dots here if they're suffering with um devil energy what they're supposed to be doing so spirit final words what did i miss something pile three is needing to know to help shake them out of whatever this is thank you so much spirits King of Swords in reverse, Six of Swords in reverse, Knight of Swords in reverse, so much swords. So I think your mind is definitely getting in the way, okay? Swords is all about mind. We had think, 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 observe, 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 look, 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 understand, understand, and Spirit's saying, no, never mind. Action, 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 okay? Like, receive what's being handed to you, take action, create, build, okay? I feel like you're waiting for something to come to you or some understanding, but it's keeping you frozen, stuck like this rock, and look, this baby here again. So you're supposed to be birthing something, pile three, something the world has not yet seen. And, and you're not birthing it, and you're stuck. Because in your mind, you're too, you're too hung up on or fixated on something here. And the Six of Swords is all about coming out of that mindset. But we're stuck in that mindset, so it keeps us stuck. So... Change the mindset. How do we do this? We don't chase thought. We don't put a lot of emotion into the thought. We can allow ourselves to feel. Absolutely. We're not suppressing. Feel. Let the thought come. Say thank you very much, thought. You are absolutely valid. But you are not serving me right now. And I wish you well. And let that thought go. Okay? And, and if it resurfaces, you could say thought. I already had you. And it led me into circles. It doesn't lead to anything new. Allow yourself to feel, okay? Because the more thoughts you have, the more stuck you get here. And so I feel like Spirit is saying, you have to face the challenge. I'm feeling kind of a little bit, and I'm going to call you out here. You know, this is how it's coming through pile three, but like a coward energy. Because I, I feel like you're not wanting to face a challenge here. And the house is, is starting to get on fire. It's time for you to take quick action. Speak a truth. Come in. Okay, quick action, come in, face the challenge. You are more than capable of doing this. You will succeed. You can't sit in the house when it's on fire. You can't sit in the storm. Yeah, I felt like you're like a glutton for pain. 
You're sitting in storms, you're sitting in fires, you're sitting in old energies, you're sitting in devils because you feel you deserve it or need to, and you don't. But this Knight of Swords is the quickest moving knight. You're successful here, but you have to be in the fight. You can't be Nine of Wands giving up. You haven't even got started. Okay, and I don't even feel like it's a fight once you're in this energy. I feel like you're going to accomplish whatever it is by speaking a truth and coming out of that. It's going to save you from a house on fire. But you're not doing this, or at least this is not your energy. And Spirit's saying this is, this is what's keeping you very stuck here, okay? There's lots going on here outside of your world that you can embrace here. A whole world of people. A whole world of enjoyment, a whole world of creation, a whole world of expansion, a whole world of what matters, a whole world of beauty that's going to inspire you, that, that, that the universe is giving to you, or that you're rejecting or not seeing or not wanting to absorb, okay? So this is what I see for you. Pile number three. I love you so much. I hope this didn't come out too too harsh. Uh, I hope this helped you. Uh, I'd love to know what this is all about. And if you were drawn to another pile, it could mean that there's multiple aspects of your situation coming through. If not, I will see you at the next one. Bye.